It's important to keep your valuables safe while you're out in the water. So today, I'm going to show you how to make a floating keychain that'll keep your keys safe while you're boating or fishing. So for this project, you're going to need about 15 feet of paracord. I've got about seven or eight feet in two different colors. And you'll see why we have these colors in a minute. Um, for the core, I'm going to use a ping pong ball. I didn't have much luck with the cork. It just wasn't quite buoyant enough to keep the keys floating. Um, and then for tools, you're going to, of course, need a monkey fist jig. Because this is a larger monkey fist, it really helps to have a jig instead of trying to tie this on your fingers or doing it freehand. Um, and then you will also need a fid to get the cord through some tight places. And then, of course, our scissors and a lighter. So to start off, we're going to meld our two cords together. So you can set everything else aside. Find one end of each. And just melt them both at the same time in the flame. And then while those are still hot, press them together. And then before they're completely solidified, you're going to want to kind of roll your fingers over them or use a pliers or something because you don't want any sharp edges to catch when we're tightening down our monkey fist. So that's pretty good. That'll be good enough at least. Then we're going to take out our monkey fist jig and we're going to start with our white end of the cord. Normally we'd start on an end of a paracord and start with an end, start wrapping around but we want to get the first pass, the first direction in our white cord. So I want enough to wrap our eight wraps. With a ping pong ball, we've got eight right here, eight passes around. So I'm going to start with my white. The side I'm wrapping with is the side that connects to my red cord. So I'll go eight full wraps around. You might want to kind of turn your cord so that it lays flat. Um, a good alternative to using 550 paracord is to use cordless paracord. That'll weigh your ping pong ball down even less. And because this one turns, I'm just going to keep on turning it until I get my eight wraps. So now once you come back to the same corner that you started on, I'm going to start here for you guys so you can see it. So this bottom corner, slide this into your view a little bit better. At that point, actually I'm going to grab a little bit extra cord. Just that meld mark is hidden. You want your white cord to just hook around that piece there. Next we're going to be doing our second pass and this is going to be in red. So you can just let this side hang. Just remember that that's the post you started on. And we're going to be running it through the middle of the jig. Make sure that none of your passes are crossing over each other. You want them to lay nice and flat. We're going to do eight passes this direction as well. And once you get about halfway done, or a couple passes on there, you want to get your ping pong ball and put it inside. Otherwise, you're going to run out of room to do that later, like I already have. There we go. And then we'll just finish up the rest of these eight passes and I'll tell you what to do next. All right, so there's our eight wraps done. We got back to our original corner. We switched over to our red right here and now we've mashed up that corner. So we have a full eight wraps around every side. This next part, I'm gonna have to kind of change views so that you can see what's going on. I'm actually gonna take it off the base and flip it up this way for you guys. So with our red, we're going to continue on and go straight down through here. So we're going to be wrapping around it this way now. So I'll get this first pass in there so you know where we're going. So you want to go straight from your one direction into your other, like that. We're going to do eight wraps this direction as well. You just want to make sure that you go underneath your white for this one. So going both directions, we want to go down through our white and up underneath our white. And this is the part, I'm forgetting, where the fid comes in handy. All 
All right, so we're just about done with the monkey fist portion. Um, we started this wrap in this corner, and so we want to end it across from there, um, but we can't do that because there's nothing to anchor it down. So we're gonna do one more wrap around so that we have eight stripes across the front here, but then underneath this wrap, we're actually gonna have nine because that has our original wrap too. Sometimes that gets a little bit jumbled. You just wanna make sure that your cords are all not overlapping like mine are. And because of the size of this monkey fist, we're just gonna have to take it off before we get that completely settled. Um, so you can go ahead and do that now once your wraps are done. You can just slide it off of your jig. And it still kind of takes the shape there, but now we need to tighten it down. Um, and this is the hardest part of making monkey fists, honestly, is to tighten it down in a way that's not gonna slide off to one side and make an uneven monkey fist. So with this, we have one added challenge. We want this joint right here to be hidden underneath our wraps. So we want to start right there. Um, it's gonna be easiest to tighten down our white first. So pull that red to where you want it, hidden underneath, and then start tightening down your white. Just pull one cord at a time through the loops until the excess comes up this side. First round of tightening is done. We've got one more round before we're finished. Um, you don't want gaps like this in yours. So we're gonna go through it one more time, same concept as before. We'll catch you at the end. So there's our monkey fist all tightened down, not showing the gaps like it was earlier. Before we add our last piece of flare, we're gonna add a little knob on the top here. Actually wanna put a fit on the end of your red again and bring it back to the middle of that white side. That way our cord is coming up in the right place to make our little knot on top. So to make that knot, we want to start by making a bite or loop in our cord, like that, and then fold both ends back so it looks like an E. Now we're going to take our monkey fist end and a little bit more slack yet, wrap it underneath and then down across. So we've got this little infinity symbol now. We're gonna make a bite here and stick another bite down through this loop. And then we'll bring this side around, pull it a little bit tighter. Bring our working end around to come down through that loop. and then over the top of our standing end attached to our monkey fist. Try to hold this still for you. And this loop here that we started with is gonna go down through that as well. This is kind of a complicated knot and I apologize that we're making it so small with what cord we have left. But I hope it's clear on camera for you all. All right, so now our working end one more time, we're gonna take it back across the knot underneath to come up through this loop again. One final step to finish it off, bring our working end around, and we're gonna go over the top of that cord and then underneath these middle two and out the other side of the knot. So going over that first one, underneath these middle two and out the other side right there. Now it's all symmetrical, and we can tighten that down. Try tighten it as close as you can to the monkey fist itself. All right, so now our knot is tightened down pretty close to the monkey fist itself. We're just gonna tuck that other end of the cord in so that it matches our other side. So my fit came off. And I'm just gonna tuck it under one of those cords. And this is decorative, so it's not gonna hold a lot of um, weight on it. So I'm just gonna cut it there, melt the end, and then actually tuck it underneath so that it doesn't slide out. Once that end is secure, we're gonna 
finish off our keychain end. So to finish off our other end, we want a little bit more secure of a closure than we did on the top. Um, I'm just going to leave a loop like this that we can attach a keychain to. And so I'm going to run our working end with the FID through at least four of those loops and then pull it through. It would be pretty tight at this point if you've tightened your knot down well. Get any twists out. And that's about the size we want it. And then I, because we're pulling this direction, we should just be able to clip the end there and melt it from, to keep it from sliding through. I'm just going to melt it on the outside, but if you want to poke it through so that you don't see that meld mark, you can definitely do that. So there is our completed bobber. I think it's time to go test it out in the water and make sure it floats. Found a nearby body of water to test things out. Here you go, snuffing. There we are. And I think we got something. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this tutorial as much as I did making it. If you want to do this project for yourselves, we put a link in the description with all the supplies that you'll need. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.